Hi and welcome back. So we've just finished running our horizontal path and we have something that's fairly chunky at this point but it, it uh, it's removed the majority of the material. Now we want to go back into create and under the three axis options we're going to select parallel finishing. So parallel finishing is going to give us a much uh, smoother surface or at the very least it's going to be much closer to our final surface than what the horizontal operation gave us. Together the parallel finishing with the horizontal roughing uh, as, a, as a combination of strategies that'll take care of probably 90-95 percent of your of your situations. So I'm going to just change one thing for now just for visualization purposes under cut parameters I'm going to select I'm going to bump this up so this is the tool diameter step over and uh, by increasing this number I'm going to have more space in between the lines that it's going to create which you see at this point. So this is now 50 percent of, of uh, the quarter inch tool that we're running. If I were to go into the simulate tab and take away my part visibility you can see just the tool path and you can see what it's doing it's essentially it's almost like a lawnmower that's going back and forth it's snaking its way back and forth it it actually just enters at this point and it exits at this point over here so this path essentially just hugs that surface as close as as you tell it to and there's a a tolerance setting in the operation as well for that. At this point I want to take a look I want to simulate this. So I've already simulated my horizontal roughing and I now want to go into my parallel finishing and you'll notice that there's nothing here when I click on this because it hasn't been simulated yet. I've showed you how to simulate by just running the part. Uh, you can also just simulate to end and when it does that it just sort of jumps to the very end and you'll notice this area here is still sort of showing orange like the original uh, stock because whoops how do I take that stock off oh I guess I have to re there we go um, because it's the stock is not quite large enough to contain that. So the stock is used for calculations and it really doesn't affect what's going to happen at the machine but for visibility purposes it it, uh, it might be worthwhile adjusting at this point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my setup again and under my stock I'm going to run part box stock. And what this will do is it'll essentially create a bounding box around my part like we did the first time but here I also have an option for an offset so I'm gonna just offset maybe uh, let's say a quarter inch in the z-axis and I only want it to be in the up direction so that's positive click OK and there you now see there's a clearance of quarter inch there. So if I go back into my simulation and rerun my operations and you can run them individually by just selecting them independently or you can just select globally everything within this uh, machining operation set and again just simulate to end and it's going to just crunch through the numbers and when it's done you have something that looks closer to what you might expect. So this is um, this is where the type of tool that you use could really influence the result that you're going to get because we're using a ball mill right now but you do have other options for different kinds of tools. Uh, they might be a flat tool, it could be um, a pointed tool, could be whatever and um, you could quite literally just replace that by opening this up double clicking here, defining a new tool, and then uh, rerunning the simulation. So that's an option. 
Another option that I want to show you right now, let's say I want to re-simulate this now. I want to recreate a new toolpath, essentially, using a much tighter control. I could go back in here. I could double-click here. And then under Cut Parameters, I could redefine this tool diameter setting. But I want to show you another way to do that. So with this toolpath selected, Control C and then Control V. And that'll just paste that whole operation. So it's a copy of that. I can double click on that now. And the reason you would want to do it this way is if you had a whole bunch of other settings that you had set up in the various different tabs and you only want to change one thing, for instance, to compare results, this is a much easier way to do that. So to to get something that's that's much closer to the surface, to the final surface, I need to tighten this up quite a bit. I'm at 50% of the tool diameter right now. I'm going to go down to 5% and generate. And typically you don't have to go uh, much beyond 5%. Anything lower than that and it's just going to take uh, a huge amount of time and um, you're really not going to see any benefit to that. But having created two, two tool paths, I can now sort of compare if I go into my top view I can compare one path. Actually, I want to turn this off. Thank you. No? There we go. I want to compare one path with the other. And you can obviously see the, the, the extra steps in between the larger lines. And as you might imagine, when I simulate this denser version, I end up with a much smoother model. So that's at 50% step over. That's at 5% step over. Now, as you probably gather from all this, you never get exactly on the model surface. There's always a deviation of some amount. And how do we know how far off we are? There's an analysis tool that's quite helpful. It's found at the top here. And so once you've done your simulation, you can click on this, and you can now run this, this comparison. And what it does is it compares the original stock with your cut model, as it is right now. And uh, so darker areas, the dark blue areas, are areas that have more than a thousandth of an inch left over. So these are areas that, that have a lot of material left in them. And maybe if we look at it from the side, it'll be more obvious. So the peak areas are where there's a lot of material left. The, the, the aqua green to, to, um, to green colored areas are areas that are very close to being zero. Anywhere, uh, these are about three, three ten thousandths of an inch plus or minus from the surface. So those are essentially on the surface as far as we're concerned. So again, if if you're just looking for something visual, this might actually be desirable. If, uh, if you're making a mold where you had a positive and a negative and you wanted these pieces to fit together, you would definitely want things to be as close to your original model as possible. So if I were to rerun this comparison again with the the, the finer step over, you'll see that everything is essentially at zero. So that looks pretty good. And finally, uh, the thing I would recommend that you do at this point maybe is just explore some of these other options. So under Create, 3 axis, you have some other uh, options. Spiral machining is um, particularly nice in a situation like this where where the surfaces are kind of smoothed over. So I'm going to go to Cut Parameter. I'm going to set this again to something fairly high. So maybe 50% to show off the scalloping. And click Generate. And so as the name suggests, this is actually creating a spiral path. 
and I don't think it's necessarily intended for aesthetic reasons, but it, it works quite well for that as well. So if actually I'm going to place this, the order in which you do things is obviously important. So uh, at this stage, I've done my parallel finishing. There's not going to be any, any material left by the time I get past this operation. Uh, you're not going to see any difference with the spiral machining at the bottom here. So I'm actually going to move this um, right up to the very top. And so if I were to rerun the simulation for the horizontal roughing, and then go into my spiral machining option, and I think my display interval is set way too too high. So I'm going to try rerunning that again. So it's going to start from the last operation and you get a sort of a sense of what it's doing now. Things can get kind of laggy, but I guess there's a fair bit of information coming through here as well. So you might find use for that, you might not. But the point is to, to just start exploring some of these options under your, your paths. And some of them will make sense right away, some of them might not. So uh, I think this is really everything I wanted to cover in the, in the first two, two videos. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.